Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a certified galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. In today's video, we will be diving into and exploring the astrology of January 28th through February 9th including the Aquarius new moon. So feeling into the energies, the astrological and the galactic energies and pulling some cards and just having a fun time together, inviting in the higher frequencies of this really exciting and transformational time that we find ourselves in right now. Thank you so much for being here together with me today. I appreciate you. Before we dive into the energy, I would like to share with you an invitation to attend my Aquarius New Moon Distant Reiki Share. I host these every single new moon and you're more than welcome to join. It's always a sacred circle of soul family coming together, inviting in the higher frequencies of the new moon, reflecting upon our intentions, planting the seeds of intentions, and inviting Reiki to support the highest expression of those intentions manifesting in the moon cycle ahead, in the six months, year ahead, and on and on. So it's really working with the new moons. It, it aggregates. You can start seeing it build over time. And it's really, really cool to witness that. If you're interested in joining, you can RSVP for free on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. The link will be below. I also want to share with you another amazing, exciting class. I will be co-creating with another sacred circle of individuals feeling guided to dream in the new healed timeline together with this north node conjunct Chiron and Aries. This is such a powerful transit that's occurring on February 19th. And in this class, we will dive into the astrology, the galactic energies, the intuitive guidance, and also have space for questions and spend time in a Reiki journey where you're able to connect to your highest guidance for this transit, exploring the highest healthy healed expressions of the archetype of Chiron and the archetype of Aries, which is what we are being guided to explore with the North Node of the Moon is very much about our spiritual destiny, our collective soul growth at this time. So I will be sharing a video more about this class, but the intention for this class is to bring in and reveal your healed timeline and of course be empowering the healed timeline for the collective as well. For more information on that, that's on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com, and it will be linked below also. All right. So, wow. <laughs> the energy right now is so potent. It's so much. And Uranus just stationed direct right around the time I'm recording this. And it has been very strong electrical energy since Pluto moved into Aquarius as well, the sun moving into Aquarius. However, we do still have Mercury, Venus, and Mars all in Capricorn as we close out January here. But you can see the Uranian energy is very highlighted on the 28th, Mercury trines Uranus. On the 29th, Mars trines Uranus. So that can feel very electric. This can be a lot of electricity in the mind, in the mental body, and in the physical body. This is Mercury and Mars. And I've been experiencing this in my journeys as literally being 
like zapped with electricity, like I'm being electrocuted again and again, but it's soft. Like it's, it's very much been integratable <laughs> and I'm in this space of being open and allowing and receiving and really supporting my body with that was actually guided to do a bit of a, a juice cleanse to help support and facilitate this process because we've also had so many solar flares and solar activities and many of us are very sensitive to these energies and even those who are less sensitive, I believe, are also feeling this activation. So really following your inner guidance in terms of what kind of self-care your physical body needs. This is Venus, Trine, Jupiter, and Taurus. Venus and Capricorn, Trine, Jupiter, and Taurus. Really being sweet to your body, being kind to your body. Do you need more water? Do you need more rest? Do you need more herbal tea? Do you need more green leaves? Do you need more time in nature? Whatever it is, I really recommend listening to that because we're also being very compelled here, Mercury and Mars squaring the lunar nodes. And any planet that is squared the lunar nodes, we're really needing to upgrade and embody the higher frequencies of that archetype. So Mercury and Mars, both in the sign of Capricorn. So being practical, grounding ourselves one step at a time, releasing from the mental body, Mercury, any of the residues of the patriarchal conditioning unhealthy programming, any kind of unhealthy belief systems that are no longer serving your highest sense of balance and your sense of sovereignty, sovereignty, the north node of the moon in Aries, you being on your mission, being clear and direct, but also being balanced and in right relationship, south node of the moon in Libra. And Mars as well, being able to align your actions with right relationship and in balance in a practical step-by-step, -step, one step at a time, and really tending to yourself as the body detoxifies and the ego detoxifies and let go. I'm just getting the image right now of like a wet rag being squeezed out and any kind of healing crisis or purging that might be coming up that this is healthy to let it go, <laughs> let it go, let it go. Anything that no longer serves your highest soul growth at this time, you know what that is and you know what you need. So as we enter February, we have Mercury, Sextile, Neptune, and this again emphasizing that letting go energy, letting go of anything within the mental body and even day-to-day -day activities that are no longer serving your highest good, having an infusion of spiritual energy within the mental body and really using your spiritual practice as any of that frenetic or anxious energy or repetitive thoughts to just keep inviting Reiki is what I do or inviting whatever your mindfulness practice is for diffusing any kind of excessive thoughts and loops and going places in your mind you don't want to go to be aware awareness is that first step and letting them go February 3rd we have Venus trine Lilith and this is also about embodiment Venus and Capricorn Lilith and Virgo tending to yourself what do you need? What do the feminine parts of you need to receive at this time? Both the feminine parts of you that are more maybe acceptable to you and those that might be less acceptable to you, inviting in a greater sense of harmony here, ease here, grounding, as well as really listening to those needs and doing what you can 
to honor those needs with gentleness and in a very pragmatic way. On February 4th, Mercury enters Aquarius, and this is like light of the divine mind right here. We've already had so much Uranus activation here at the end of January within Mercury, our minds, Mars, our body, our will, our ego, our drive, our identity. And with Mercury entering Aquarius, this is like things get light up, lit up even next level. So any kind of grounding and tending to your body you will be well prepared for this transition to even more of that light of the divine mind, mental brilliance, a lot of mental quickness and dexterity and thinking in terms of the humanitarian ideals, the bigger vision, the community, collaboration, how do we invite heaven on earth into everybody's lives and co-create it together as a community? How do we empower the new earth forms and so much of this information and insights and coming together can really come into greater clarity at this time. February 5th and 7th are two big days in terms of transits here. February 5th is kind of a doozy. <laughs> we have Venus square Chiron and sun sextile Chiron. So this is a big invitation to heal, big invitation to be healing the divine feminine, big invitation to be healing our relationships, our sense of values, our sense of self-worth. What do you value at this time? Are you valuing yourself enough, prioritizing yourself enough? And, you know, making whatever changes might be necessary and shifts in your consciousness to accommodate your new healed timeline chiron in aries and empowering your right to exist and this healing energy is really really leading us into this mercury conjuncting pluto which is a total transformation and recalibration of the mental body this is extremely powerful in the sign of aquarius and really inviting in the light of the divine mind and the light of the soul consciousness and becoming more soul conscious so any kind of healing work you can do on the fifth very much supporting a recalibration of the mental body also on the fifth this could be a big purge of mental programming and I've been asking a lot in my journeys to delete, <laughs> delete things and forget certain things. I have a great memory and I've been inviting Reiki to delete from my memory and delete. I've been brainwashing myself, <laughs> delete from my memory and really like let go, forget things that no longer serve my highest good to remember so that there's more mental space, mental body space freed up to remember more of who I truly am. So this could be something you play with, or maybe there's another way you can work with this energy, but this could be a very profound detoxification of the mental body so that more of that light of the divine mind, light of your soul and spirit consciousness has space to really take the front seat and take the steering wheel and have, have control of your life. So it's not any of that mental energy that is not relevant and not helpful anymore, not in alignment anymore. February 7th, another big day, Venus squaring the nodes of the moon, Venus trying Uranus, and Mars sextiling Neptune and Sun sextiling the North Node. So once again, we're having this radical valuing of ourselves, Venus square the nodes. And what do you value now in February, January, February 2024? And how can you align your thinking, how, accommodate this shift in consciousness within so that you're more soul aligned and are choosing balance, choosing harmony, choosing peace, 
calibrating to your highest potential at this time. Venus trying Uranus, this is likely to be in new ways, liberating ways, freedom-oriented ways, awakened ways, a real shift. This might be shifts within your value system that are being more highlighted at this time. And the way you value yourself as a collective being as well, shifting more and more into this collective sense of identity as well. I mean, that's even echoed by this Mars sextile Neptune. It's like, how can my ego will and identity self and personality self be fully aligned with this, the will of spirit and the directive of spirit? How can those be unified and work together so that my body human consciousness is fully just a vehicle and a conduit for my soul, for my spirit, living in the world, creating in the world, having my life, having my resonant heart field be in highest integrity with my intentions for this lifetime. And sun sex down know that that is also having to do with an identity and a a sense of flow here in terms of your soul purpose and being guided by what feels good, what lights you up, what makes you feel that sense of brightness, lightness, joy, and community and belongingness that are your birthright. And then on the 8th, we have Sun Square Uranus, which really is an aspect that stays with us into the new moon, which is also Square Uranus. This is the chart of the Aquarius new moon. And like I said, you can see that the sun and the moon are together conjunct in the sign of Aquarius, and they are in square to Uranus and Taurus at 19 degrees, 10 minutes of Taurus, the sun and moon at 20 degrees, 41 minutes of the sign of Aquarius. So this again brings in intense electrical energy, intense awakened energy. Can't predict anything for this one. <laughs> Uranus is that energy of expect the unexpected, sudden surprises, disruptive events, all intended to kind of shake you up and wake you up and allow you into your next level of awakening and spiritual growth and light of the divine mind and light of the divine body really being brought in together with a connection to the earth and a connection to our soul family and spiritual community as well. This new moon is very interesting. One of the key words that just kept coming in again and again was Atlantean light codes. And you see that reflected in the artwork here. I was having fun with the AI creating different images for the Atlantean light codes, but you see this chart has a really unique configuration here. I included the asteroid Atlantis, which I've been including pretty often. That is code 1198 if you're using charts in astro.com. And you see, just by including it, we see this incredible configuration that is called a mystic rectangle. And it includes the new moon in Aquarius, sextiling Chiron conjunct the north node in Aries, that is trine Atlantis asteroid in Leo, Atlantis asteroid in Leo, sextile the south node of the moon in Libra, which is trining back through to the Aquarius new moon. And it also, so it has these flows on the outside, the blue lines. These are harmonious, easy flowing energies. And then it has two different oppositions. So the new moon being opposite Atlantis, Atlantean light codes, and the north node of the moon in Chiron being opposite the south node of the moon, which north and south node of the moon, they're always opposite like this. So you get like an envelope here and it's a mystic rectangle. So on the outside, it might look 
easy and there's flow. Like in the natal chart of people who have these, I have some of these, it all looks like easy and flow. But on the inside, there can be quite a lot of tension that's compelling a lot of action and energy and drive and focus. So it's it's also, it's quite mystically oriented as well to have this aspect configuration. It's very, very powerful. And to see that here with Atlantis, the nodes of the moon that have everything to do with our soul growth, our spiritual destiny, Chiron here, again, in preparing for my Chiron North Node of the Moon, the new Dreaming in the New Healed Timeline class, I've, I've really been feeling the Atlantean energy come in so much. And also with Pluto moving into Aquarius, this like, this intense, it's like the memories of Atlantis upwelling from the bottom of the ocean. I was shown in a journey just yesterday that basically traveling under the sea and uncovering different stargates and portals at the bottom of the ocean and how much there is under the surface of the ocean that just because it's underwater, we think we discount it. We don't know it's there. We don't talk about it. Don't think about it. It's not a part of the collective consciousness, but my goodness, it's a part of the collective unconscious. And so seeing different beings like the whales and the sea creatures that know how to use these portals as well. And I'm sure many different star beings. So, I mean, why why this is even more relevant here, Atlantis is so much about the underwater mysteries. And we'll see in a moment here that Chiron and the North Node are both aligned with Tau Ceti, which is the sea monster, the galactic sea monster. So really, really interesting, powerful energy in this new moon, very mysterious, a lot I think a lot's going to come through at the Reiki share, so I hope you come in our meditations, in our journeys, any kind of spiritual practice. There could be information revealed, because look at this mystic rectangle, this envelope. It's like an envelope containing a message, containing information, or you could even think of it like a book you can open and read. So really profound. We also have this it's pretty much at the center here too, like a perfect rectangle. And inside of that, we also have this perfect triangle, this grand trine in earth with Venus and Capricorn, Uranus and Taurus and Lilith in Virgo. And this is, this is beautifully grounding since the Uranian energy is so highlighted. But really bringing in this new sense of value, this new earth, manifesting it, making it physical, a lot of divine feminine healing happening. And I think it's even like the divine feminine holding space for the divine masculine to heal at this time as well. Both Venus and Mars are in sextile to Neptune, quite a lot of letting go occurring here and releasing. And I think this could be a lot of those trauma signatures that have been kept in the body from time such as Atlantis and different memories we've had within this lifetime and other lifetimes and to let those go so that they're not wreaking havoc on our relationships. They're not wreaking havoc within our sense of self-worth and personal value. They're not damaging our body anymore. The, the rag being wrung out to let that go, Neptune and Pisces is the water. So allowing that letting go, allowing that spiritualization to happen I think is very, very important at this time. And also mentioning this square between Uranus and the new moon is also highlighted because each zodiac sign is ruled by a certain planet or two planets. Aquarius, the modern ruler, is Uranus. The ancient ruler is Saturn. So having the ruler of the new moon in square also enhances that electricity. And with Reiki, it's so interesting when I feel the electricity, I will just ask it now 
to soften, to smooth. So if you're feeling it too much, always remember that with your free will, you can invite it to be softer or smoother or turn the volume down a little bit, dial down the intensity to ask, to command it, Mercury, speak it, and it will. It's amazing. Y'all try it out. So we have a predominance here of the air energy. There's going to be a lot of noise. There's already a lot of noise. And so withdrawing, having your quiet time when you need that, sleeping, resting, putting the technology away, just being alone, being in darkness, <laughs> you know, crawl into your little cave, wherever that is. And finding those moments of peace and stillness and quiet is exceedingly important. And even if it's only five minutes or a couple times throughout the day or maybe right before bed or right when you wake up, however that works for you or when you're showering, to take those moments and really get all you can from them. That's very important. And listen to your own inner guidance and your own inner voice here. There's a lot of fixed energy as well, which has this sustaining type of energy. It can make things feel a bit stuck or constricted, static, like stubborn even. However, there is there is some mutable and cardinal energy here for us to work with to be initiating, but this is a great, this is very supportive energy for finishing things like being in that middle time and just keeping going and sustaining and putting in the daily effort here. But really, the Aquarius new moon, this is this is a wonderful way to hearken in the Pluto and Aquarius energy and this this age of Aquarius type of new way of being, new way of co-creating heaven on earth and new earth and the new forms and really just incredibly exciting to see us so supported at this time. This is the Sabian symbol for the new moon. It comes from mindfire.ca, the astrological mandala by Dane Ridger. Really, really wonderful. And the symbol is a disappointed and disillusioned woman courageously faces a seemingly empty life. So it sounds like a terribly low vibe <laughs> symbol. And at first I didn't even want to bring it in, but really what it's talking about is resilience. And some of what it also is reminding me of is the Eridanus galactic energy and even Atlantis. So this sense of being in a time of chaos or crisis and how many of us have soul memories and wounds around. We've seen cataclysms. We've seen these resets. We've lived through them. We've either been on the side of being more of a spiritual guide watching them occur or being a higher dimensional being watching these resets occur. Maybe in some cases even being on part of the team that knows and is kind of like facilitating it or holding space for these natural resets to occur on the earth, on other planets. And maybe also having memories too of like being in one of these disasters or resets or cataclysms or catastrophes and having that cellular memory within you and how much this can be embodied as like a fear we're carrying of, oh my gosh, it's the end times and the whole world is you know, just so toxic and bad things are happening. And there's plenty of that fear vibration to tap into and to be very aware of that when you're tuning into that. And to also recognize for yourself, what of that is resonating and what of that might be just some kind of like you're in the echo chamber of a trauma signature and the gift within 
these times of seeing these cataclysms and living through them is that one, there are healing modalities such as Reiki and others where the timelines can be shifted and healing can occur even in these cataclysmic types of scenarios. I've seen that happen many, many times. And so there's always the healing we can do retroactively, even of a cataclysm or a memory or a trauma that seems from our linear human perspective to have happened in the past. This is amazing. And also the resilience of humanity, the resilience of the soul and spirit, and that we're being asked here to remember our resilience, to heal the trauma signatures and remember our resilience, I think, really, really powerfully. Another signature within Uranus and the Aquarius archetype, now with Pluto moving in there, is trauma. And so finding ways to keep letting go of trauma and any kind of identification with crisis that we have as individuals and also as a collective humanity, always expecting the worst to happen. And I noticed this in my own mind a lot and to let go of that and to shift it into expecting good results and expecting everything's always working out for me and the universe supports me and all of these other kinds of beliefs that may be more supportive and whatever resonates for you, but affirming one that I really love from a classmate of mine in Next Step Reiki was expect miracles, accept miracles, and receive miracles. And, and what a big shift that can happen from that point of view. And even seeing how some of the experiences in your life may be guiding you more into that type of mentality that feels really new and may feel really ephemeral, but perhaps you're starting to collect evidence that that's actually something that's more the truth than the focusing on the worst case scenario um, kind of mental worry pattern. And I think this is so important for Pluto in Aquarius and definitely for this new moon is to be aware when we're in those negative thinking cycles and spirals and really be shifting them into whatever your truth is. And I give some examples just to give you examples, but by no means are those the only possibilities. Find your possibility that resonates with you. Here are the galactic charts for this new moon from galacticastrochart.com where you can put in your birth information and receive a free chart like this showing your conjunct and opposites to the fixed stars and the constellations. You can also adjust the settings and receive information about the trines and the sextiles and the squares. All of them are important. The conjunct and opposites I tend to focus on because they are the loudest, they are the strongest, they're very dominant, they're more easily access and the trines and the sextiles and the squares give more of those nuances here so the sun and moon did not have any conjunct or opposites within this particular calculator but you see how much galactic support there is here Nihal star and lepus Bellatrix and Mintaka stars and Orion, Capella star and Auriga, and one of my favorites, Razzlehag and Ophiuchus, the healer star here. We have so much galactic support here. I think this is a, a strong signature of Orion healing timelines as well, and really letting go of those galactic trauma signatures that we might be carrying from Orion constellation and even looking at healing in particular something I've been noticing a lot healing the narcissist empath dynamic and restructuring and reconfiguring 
self-value and self-worth and self-identity and relationship so that that is not a trauma signature relational pattern that needs to be relived again and again just because you're an empath or you're a light worker or you're someone who gives a lot and cares a lot how to move beyond this pattern into more lighthearted relationships, more communal relationships as well that are connected to the earth, connected to the sky, to the heavens, to a more shamanic way of life, to a simpler way of life. And really for your highest healing at this time as well. So this is incredibly supportive we see, as I mentioned, the nodes of the moon aligned with Tau Ceti, Star, and Cetus constellation. This is the sea monster. This is the whale. And this star has so much mystery to it. And Cetus constellation, so much mystery, so much wisdom. And I'm so excited to explore this in depth in my upcoming class, Dreaming in the New Healed Timeline as well as Chiron conjunct Alpharat star in Andromeda constellation, which is another energy I'll really be diving into in that class. But this is, again, dreaming with the whales, the dream time. This is also about freedom here. You may be connecting with the Andromedans. You may be connecting with the galactic whales, there might be under the sea adventures and flying whale adventures too. I've had many of those come in. We have Venus in conjunct alignment with Lyra ring nebula. And this is really beautiful. This is that ring nebula that our last Capricorn new moon was aligned with. And to have Venus there now, it's like an embodied divine feminine integration of everything that's happened in the last moon cycle, more remembrance, more embodiment of our galactic origins, our human origins, our ability that we exist in these stargate portal, divine, sublime technology bodies that can accomplish so much yes just our little our little human bodies here can accomplish so much in terms of our awakening and our ascension and our ability to accommodate light and higher consciousness and co-creating with the galactics and co-creating with the multiverse and understanding more of our multidimensional self so this is incredibly beautiful energy here. Mars opposite Procyon star and Canis minor. This is the little dog. This could be certain opportunities coming in suddenly like fireworks. And it's good to just act upon them and seize them right in that moment because like fireworks, they will disappear. So anything you're being guided to that feels really soul aligned at this time to seize those those opportunities that feel good for you. Jupiter is in alignment with one of my favorite stars, Shadir star in Cassiopeia constellation. This is the queen. This is the divine feminine. This is the, the leader in the divine feminine sovereignty that leads with intuition, with mysticism, with a sense of holding sacred space and connecting to the earth, to the heavens, and holds that archetype, that healed archetype of the queen. And how beautiful it is to have this Jupiter highlighting for us the healed divine feminine and releasing and shedding any kind of belief systems that may be carryovers from when matriarchal societies have gone wrong, either on earth or in other worlds, and inviting in memories and embodiment of how we can live in balance, divine feminine, divine masculine, right now on earth as human beings. Also conjunct Andromeda Titowin 
highlighting our need for freedom. You may be connecting with Andromeda beings at this time. If that comes in, know that that is definitely a possibility and how beautiful to travel with the Andromedans and learn their lessons about instantaneous manifestation and intergalactic travel and all kinds of wonderful, exciting adventures that they may wish to bring you on. Just ask for the enlightened Andromedans. I've myself enjoyed some very fun experiences with them. Saturn conjunct Deneb Adige star in Cygnus. Deneb Adige, one of my favorites. Saturn is also opposite Lilith that is also in an opposition to Deneb Adige and opposite Fomalhaut. So we have Saturn and Lilith both highlighting this Denebadish star. This is the shaman star. This is in Cygnus the Swan. And so inviting us once again, because Saturn will be separating from Denebadish and leaving it alone for another 30 years. So seize the opportunity here to embody the inner authority of the Cygnian beings who sought to establish heaven on earth and co-create heaven on earth within their star system, within their planetary spheres, and receiving the higher guidance of flying above and rising above. This is one of the three stars here, Cygnus. We have also Pluto making an alignment with a star in Cygnus this year. But before we get to Pluto, I want to talk about Draco, Saturn opposite Draco Thuban. And I have my dragon deck I thought I would pull a card right now for what dragon wants to come through in this reading. So this is interesting. This is the dragon that came through. It's the indigo dragon. Knowing. Akash. Integration. And it's Pleiadian. Indigo. Third eye. Akash, this is like the the envelope, the mystic square, the mystic rectangle, like there's a packet of information that's available to you at this time to remember. So be sure you take some time to be quiet, to be still, and to listen for what this message might be. This is also a powerful time of integration of intuition coming online more and really integrating and embodying all of the activation that's been coming through and working with each of us in such powerful ways so that we remember more of who we are and we can show up and share as that empowered sovereign self soul and spirit self that we are I also think it's really interesting pulling the dragon card because this Aquarius new moon is coinciding with the Chinese Lunar New Year, which harkens in, it brings in the year of the dragon. So this is the dragon that wants to be with us as we close out January, enter February, basically finishing this Chinese lunar year and starting a new cycle again in around February 9th, 10th. These cards come from Araya Anra's amazing Divining with the Dragons deck. And if you're into dragons, I definitely recommend you check out this deck, especially for Year of the Dragon. It's a wonderful time to connect with the dragons. And you can also see your own dragon connections in your chart with any alignments to Draco, to Ophiuchus as well. Ophiuchus is a man holding a serpent and Hydra as well. So these would be strong indications of connections to dragons. And of course, in your shamanic journeys and Reiki journeys, you may have none, no alignments that suggest dragon connections, and yet you are very connected to dragons. So never feel limited by the astrology or the charts. These are all different possibilities. We're infinite multidimensional beings and definitely never forget that trust your intuition. And Pluto is conjunct a Ladfar star in Lyra constellation and will be 
also conjuncting Albireo star in Cygnus constellation and Altair star in Aquila constellation. And those three alignments I go into in depth in my illuminating Pluto and Aquarius class, which you can receive the recordings of on my website. Those will be linked down below. There's an information portion as well as a channeled Reiki journey to help you invite in, heal, and receive the higher frequencies of this extraordinary transit Pluto in Aquarius. But really, these alignments, Pluto with the three birds is inviting us to rise above and take a higher perspective again and again this year, this moon cycle, every moment, every day to keep rising above. And yes, touching down, being grounded, being upon the earth, but also remembering our ability to rise above our resilience, our power, our strength, and our boldness and our courage to show up and be who we truly are at this time. Each of our authentic selves is needed for this healthy manifestation of the Aquarian paradigm that's all about coming together in community and ultimately into a greater sense of unification consciousness. All right, so a final message about this time period and the new moon. I drew a galactic heritage card by Lisa Royal Holt. And this is the card I received. It's masculine principle. It's Lyra past. It reminds me of that Venus aligned to Lyra ring nebula that was showing us so strongly the Lyra energy coming through the divine feminine. And we have quite a lot of Mars activation too occurring. So seeing this card makes me feel that we're really being asked to step into our right sense of action. It's like everything that we are experiencing is, is guiding us to this portal of February 19th of the north node of the moon in Aries conjunct Chiron in Aries, which is about the masculine. Aries is a sign ruled by Mars being in your sovereignty, being clear, being direct, being in right action, being courageous, bringing forth the healed masculine and what that looks like because we need it so much. And really all of this is building to this February 19th point, which is a checkpoint, a gateway, another building up to our Aries eclipse season this spring. So Really, it's like we're working on, we're on the cosmic curriculum plan here of inviting in the healed masculine. And I think this is much about what all of this Atlantean light codes and Atlantis energy is about too, is letting go of the trauma signatures there and inviting in the balance of the masculine that can create these new earth structures and forms that are in right relationship and harmony with the earth in balance with the divine feminine balancing our logic and reason and our linear and our physical and our structural and our left brain balancing that with our right brain and our intuition and our receiving and our stillness and our flow and fluidity and creativity and mysticism and really holding space for both. But the emphasis right now, it seems like, is this masculine principle and linking all the way back into Atlantis. So I hope that is helpful and valuable to you. Please join me for the Distant Reiki Share February 9th free to sign up for that on my website. And if you feel guided to do so, also please join me for Dreaming in the New Heal Timeline February 19th. I'm also available for a variety of readings for Reiki sessions and I have Reiki training classes coming up in eclipse season. All the details are on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. Thank you so much for watching. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.
beautiful end of January, beginning of February, and Aquarius New Moon and Chinese Lunar New Year to you.